Alright, so with a new year comes a new draft. And the more that I've gone to know these players will be entering the league later this summer, the more intrigued I've been with how it's all going to play out. So let's get into it. Coming up is the first edition of Double Takes NBA Mock Draft. Just want to quickly ask you guys to subscribe to this channel. The support really means a lot. Let us know in the comments what you want talked about next, and any feedback is greatly appreciated. So before I reveal the first overall pick, I have to make some things clear. This is a list based on my own personal opinion, so it's how I think it should go, not how I think it's gonna go. Also, I'm only gonna be doing the lottery, aka the first 14 picks, and I'll try to go in depth of the first eight or so and try to be a little quicker as we go on. Every draft, especially this one, is incredibly nuanced and different people's takes on certain players can vary immensely. So if you disagree with me, I understand completely. Also, I'll do another edition of the mock draft when the college season comes to an end. Alright, so the guy that I would take with the first overall pick, and I know this is going to piss a lot of people off, but it's Jalen Suggs, and before you click away from this video, hear me out. I made a video about this earlier, but Suggs has shown me more NBA ready qualities and has won multiple games against the best teams in the country. Cade is taller at 6'8", but Suggs is 6'4", which is still adequate for a point guard. Suggs has a better 3 point percentage, shoots better from the floor overall, he averages more assists and less turnovers and is grabbing the same amount of rebounds despite being 4 inches shorter. And oh yeah, he gets more steals too. I think Suggs' points per game would be better if he was on a worse team and was more free to do whatever he wanted, but he's shown time and time again that he is content making the right play to help his team win. When he wants to take over a game though, he can flip that switch. He's been a lifelong leader, multi-sport athlete, and is the engine behind the best team in the country. Seriously, the only thing that Cade has over Suggs is that he's taller than him, and I buy into stuff that I've seen on the court way more than I do measurables and convoluted combine stuff. And if you still think that Suggs doesn't have a case, go back to the tape on Jalen's games against Iowa and Kansas, who are both better opponents than anyone Cade has faced this year by far. I see a lot of similarities between Suggs' college career and Chris Paul's, but even with that, this was still a really hard decision, and I can definitely see it both ways. So yeah, Cade's not a scrub by any means. I mean, this guy could be a future superstar at the next level, and that's why he's going second. So Cade has a great feel for the game and plays point guard with a small forward's body. He has top tier vision and has that big guy playmaker versatility that someone like Ben Simmons has. His athleticism and height gives him an incredible potential at the NBA level, and he should have no problems adjusting to the physicality in the pros due to his size. If Mac McClung didn't outplay him in their head-to-head -head matchup, I might have given Cade the nod here. It's that close between him and Jalen. Now at third, I have Evan Mobley, who might turn out to be the best player in this entire draft. His incredibly high ceiling is built on the fact that he has shown shooting ability and ball skills that most centers just don't have. Unlike Luka Garza, he can also pair these tools up with supreme athleticism, making him a prime candidate to be the next Joel Embiid. Once he fills out and gets even more athletic in his physical prime, he's going to be a problem. In the fourth slot, I have Jalen Green, and this was another hard decision, this time between Green and Jonathan Kaminga, but I'll give the slight edge to Jalen and here's why. Green has this floating on air kind of look to him when he's on the court. He's probably the quickest guy in the draft, and could very well be a generational type player one day. He's still developing though, and any NBA team who picks him up will know that he's a bit of a project but his hype exists for a reason. He is the best shooting guard prospect we've seen in quite some time. At five is a guy who I think might be the most NBA ready in this draft, it's Jonathan Kaminga. We've heard nothing but good things about Kaminga in these G League scrimmages. People are saying his shooting is much more consistent and there was never a question about his frame and athleticism. This guy can turn into a real bully ball type player. Not saying he's Zion, but sometimes there's flashes of Williamson here and there that can't be ignored. At 6, I got Scotty Barnes. This guy's shown a lot in college. If you haven't seen his games, I highly recommend you look them up because he's got some serious potential. Just like Patrick Williams, Barnes' stats can fool you a bit just because of how Florida State likes to play. But make no mistake, Scotty has shown flashes of every offensive skill in the book. In many ways, I think his current skill set is more in tune for the NBA than it is for college, let alone a team with such a strict system like the Seminoles have. At 7, Jalen Johnson comes off the board. This is another guy who's boosted his draft stock in this shortened college season. This guy shows a lot of shades of Bam Adebayo. 
He can become an undersized but versatile big who can finish on both sides of the basket, move the ball well, and have an effect not seen on the box score. His free throw shooting will be the biggest question mark going forward, but he looks too much like Bam or Draymond Green to pass up on him if you got the seventh pick. Now at picks 8 and 9 are guys that I'm sure a lot of people thought would go earlier, but have had disappointing college seasons to say the least. It's BJ Boston and Zaire Williams in that order. Neither of these guys can seem to get into a rhythm so far in college, but on pure talent alone, they have a place in the top 10. I've already gone over their situation in a past video, so I won't talk your ear off about them, but they need to get it together soon if they don't want to continue to slip down the draft board. Picks 10 and 11 are also super close, but I'm gonna give the slight advantage to Moses Moody. This guy can score with the best of them. His shooting so far is what most thought BJ Boston's could be. 42% from three and is also a great free throw shooter, but he really needs to work on his passing and playmaking or he's gonna be a Kevin Martin type player at best. Now the guy that I almost put over him is Keon Johnson. He goes at 11. This is another guy that I made a video about, and if Tennessee's season wasn't postponed and he wasn't coming off the bench, I think that there would be a lot more buzz about his potential. He's right behind Jalen Green in quickness and has a Russell Westbrook-like tenacity to his game. Don't sleep on him. He could end up being the steal of the draft. Alright, approaching the end here at pick 12 is James Booknight. Now, I am from Connecticut, so maybe I'm a little biased, but this UConn transfer has been killing it. Not a lot of people score 40 in a college game. His ball handling and shooting alone have made him a lottery pick, but similar to Moody, he really needs to work on his playmaking. If he does that, I can see him progressing into a guy like CJ McCollum. Second to last pick here at 13, it's another Team Ignite guy, Dacian Nix. In his first ever scrimmage with Team Ignite, he had 9 assists and showed off a lot of basketball IQ. I put him here because I respect the G League more than most do, but I see him being a Rondo type player and maybe even better if he can develop his shot further and expand his defensive skill set. With the 14th and final pick of this mock draft, I'm going to go with Usman Garuba. I think guys like Luka and Dirk have taught us not to write off players from Europe. He has an NBA body that is paired with strong pick and roll skills. He's a work in progress, but if he's refined further, he reminds me somewhat of a Pascal Siakam with a larger frame. So that does it for the first edition of Double Takes NBA Mock Draft. Hope you enjoyed it. Again, let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree with my picks. But whether or not you think my list was trash or spot on, I know for sure we're all looking forward to this draft that has historical implications.